Hello TCG and Larkana enthusiasts and welcome back to yet another Larkana gameplay video where today we are taking our quest only deck we profiled this week. Check for the link down in the description below for that deck profile. To the Pixel Born Ladder in a best two out of three. So without further ado, let's jump into the games. Alright, our first matchup is against Sapphire Emerald. Alright, well anyways, we're in the lab here, so this means we are going to see some decks that are using the cards from um, Into the Inklands. So, we will be seeing that, so we do get to see some of this, if you wanted to play this deck immediately, into the post Into the Inklands. Um, I think I'm going to take up both Merlin Goats, and I think that's really it. Now, again, I'm not sure if the match score system has been updated, where it's much better, so we're just going to do um, two games... That's two out of three games, but we're going to play it against different opponents just so we don't have any issues with this uh, match score system. I'm happy it's in Pixelborn. I'm happy it's here, especially once we get once the new season starts up. We'll probably try to see what we can do with this, because I think that 100 percent is much, much better for us. It gives you much better looking games, especially because the competitive season is going to be um, best two out of three for your games. Now, I do really want Lorcana to start adding in side decks because I think a lot of cards are very side deck worthy, not really main deck worthy. So, my hope is side decks will start coming in, but I've asked that a hundred times over in Digimon and they don't come true. So anyways, places. I've yet to kind of figure out how locations really work, how you move guys into locations yet. Um, if I'm being honest, I need to actually research how that all works so I get an idea before we I start my discussion on um, each color for Lakana. So he's playing Emerald um, Sapphire. So this is very interesting. Sapphire from Post of the Into the Inklands has a very, very unique um, new mechanic where Grandma Tala Ghost, as I'll call her, um, anytime a card is put into your inkwell, you basically, in essence, just claim a, um, a, a lore. So it's really cool. So anytime you put a character or any card into your inkwell, you gain lore for it. So it's really cool. This Ursula is also really cool as well, because whenever she sings a song, you can play that song for free. Now, I was thinking about it. It's a good thing it's not a five, because all the steel songs would be very broken. You could basically, in essence, sing twice um, a whole new world or swords and really start um, going ham. Um, I think I'm going to throw this Cinderella into the inkwell. We will quest and quest. And then I'm going to bounce back Pinocchio and... Oh, yeah, you forgot. You can actually now attack locations. For some reason, a fox could swing and burn down a village. Don't ask me how that works, but you can attack locations. I'm not exactly sure what's getting him the extra. Oh, unless it's like every turn, locations actually give you um, lore. So yeah, so here we go. Sh Ursula saying, um, Mother Knows Best. Now Mother Knows Best gets to play for free and gets put on the bottom of his deck so it's very cool so that must mean locations every turn just gets you a uh, lore okay so you spin one uh spin one ink it looked like and then you can basically get the uh locate you can put them onto the location okay very interesting um i'm gonna put another pascal into our ink well what I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to put out the rabbit so we can gain a draw and then pass. Now, yes. So that's very interesting. So if a location has a lore counter on it, it just gained you a lore at the start of turn. Okay. I really do need to look how these... Uh... So yeah. Uh, what he shifted over is slime, I think. And slime actually acts as like a full shift. So, he can take the place of any shift name you need. So, Gaston was able to shift over the slime and then trigger um, for anything. So, I know some people have complained that it's not a good card. And I do like that. So, the card he's using is a draw two, discard one. Um, it's the Mulan song where she's dressing up. 
But yeah, so I know some people don't like the card for what it does, but I really think it's underrated. I think there's some really good things you can do with that card. All right, so I gotta now deal with the problem of Gaston now being on the board. I mean, it's not impossible for me to remove it with Madame Ham. Um, I think I'm gonna put Madame Ham's Snake over here. I'm gonna throw out a Pascal. I'm going to quest with the rabbit. Do this. Bounce the rabbit. Get a draw. I'm going to smash out the Gaston. That will knock us both out. But that removes that from being a problem. So, I really do like this Ursula. That is, that is very cool. Um, she's just so good. I mean, this man literally draw, drew, I think, four cards a turn. So now he's going to be able to throw two cards into his inkwell, which is really cool. And by the way, whenever a character is banished while it's on that, on the location, now, he, of course, he didn't decide to do it, both, but he can put them into his inkwell. Now, here's another new card that's really, really cool. Um, this is Robin Hood. He quests for four. Like I said, I'm not 100% sure if Into the Inklands is going like crazy ham into... Um, trying to think what I want to call it. Um, crazy Ham into Power Creep. I think there are some cards that are very, very strong from the set. But I don't know if I'd call them Power Creep cards. All right. Now, of course, he's got quite a lot here with Ursula being able to do something. Robin Hood is questing for four turns. So, I mean, it is going to be pretty honking large. Of course, a new item here, Lucky Dime. Choose a uh, character of yours in game lore. Okay. I could bounce back his location. I'm going to have to deal with these two. I'm going to have to try to think of how I want to do it. I am think I'm going to have to sacrifice some people here. Okay. Let's quest the Pascal. I'm going to quest the Arthur to... Bounce the Pascal back to my hand. Gain the two there. This is only questing for one a turn. Chosen, choose a character of yours and it gains lore equal to their lore counter. Okay, so that is going to be hard. Um, oh. Turn a chosen character to less. Oh, right, that's a chosen character. That's a location. Okay, so I can't do that. Um, quest, quest, I'm gonna use the fox to bounce, I guess we'll bounce that, problem is there's not much I can do here, all I can do is like knock out Ursula, maybe I should have knocked out Ursula earlier, now he gets to put that, he will put that in inkwell, I have nothing to deal with this, um, yeah he's got it, I'm gonna concede that one, and we're going to decline. All right, our second game will be against Emerald Steel. Again, I'm not using the match system just because I'm not sure how stable it is just yet. We'll start using it once we, uh, once the season actually starts for post into the Inklands. Right. Not a bad hand here. I, I think we'll take out some of these duplicates. I don't think I want the rabbit right now. So I think we'll do that. All right, that's actually pretty nice there. That symbol will be able to use this card here pretty well. Okay, so we actually have a really good combo here, Lilo into Simba, but we are dealing with Steel, by the way. So he, it, depending on what his Steel um, control cards are, we will have to be cautious of that. I mean, again, it proves that we actually need like into the Inkland cards to really start, you know, really doing things. I don't think you can take like a Floodborne based deck any really into um, this time period right now. Um, I think I'm going to send Leifu over here. Quest, and we're going to bodyguard a Simba. Pass. And the next turn, we'll be able to use BR Guest. Let's look at the top four and add something to our hand. Get another really good card there for the beast. 
the new Robin Hood here. Again, being able to use the slime to shift is really good. So when it was Whitney, however he bashes a character, you gain. Yeah, so whenever he bashes a character by battle, you can gain two lore because of it. Okay. I think we're gonna put that away. And if he wants to come after it, he can be my guest. I'm gonna put out the Pinocchio and then... Yeah, I'm gonna put out another Lilo. I'm gonna start spamming him. Yeah, now the problem is I should probably be a little more cautious about doing that spam. Because he does have... Okay, so he's not gonna sing Grab Your Swords. Which is what I was kind of afraid of, what he was going to do with that, because then that just knocks out the entirety of my board in one shot. Alright, so he's playing hand control in here as well. Interesting thought there. Oh, I can't play this rabbit this turn, because I'll actually lose both these characters. So I guess we'll go Doc. I'll do Madam Him Snake to bounce that. And then what I'll do is then I'll replay it. Fantastic. I mean, heck, if he wants to smash into this and deal himself one more damage and then Madam Him Snake next turn knock it out, he can be my ghost. Interesting, he, ha he think he's missed a drop at some point. Because I went second, so yeah, he's missed a drop right now. Because he definitely should be one up on me for drops. Alright, he's gonna return a He's gonna return that uh card to his hand and he's going to summon a guy. Um let's see. I'm gonna get rid of an action card. Sucks, because now he's gonna get a little John to uh to get him a draw here. So he's doing a uh, steel hand so he's using hand control here. He's playing steel emerald hand control. Ugh. That's annoying. Well, sudden chill on me too. It basically means now I'm up on a appeal battle with no cards in my hand. Which is what he wants. That's what a hand control deck wants you to have, is no cards in your hand. Hmm. Well, I mean, he opened up Little John for me, so I guess I'll take out that bait. It's annoying bait. I know what he did with it. Yeah, he'll shift here. I know people are going to hate that slime 100%, but I mean, it's stuck in the emerald color, so you literally have to hope that you whatever color you want to use with it is useful. Alright, it'll be interesting exactly what I got next. A Cinderella. I mean, if maybe I get lucky and I get friends on the other side. Right now I'm top decking, which is exactly what a hand control deck wants you to do. I really do think this deck does get a whole lot more pieces. It gets hand control and it gets control. So it's going to be even more interesting because now it has the full ability to use Robin Hood for control. And then it still has all the really good hand control cards. It's interesting that this cat actually has become more prevalent in hand control. Yeah. Nothing I can do about it. Well, I hope you all enjoyed those games of Lorcana. Let me know down in the comments your thoughts. And while you're commenting, do make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell so you can notify when my videos go live for you. And we'll see you here next time on Mama Dragons TCG.